some guys can get overwhelmed. And these are the tips I want to give you as an overview in this particular video to help you paint like a pro, even at home. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. We got an awesome one for you today, so let's go into the booth and see what we got. Okay, so right behind me we got the MDX that we're going to learn today on how to paint like a pro. Well, how to paint like a pro. I'm just a weekend warrior like most of you guys and that's why I'm here to help you learn just a little bit and also help those painters that are struggling and for them to help me learn some tips. So drop a comment, I'll make sure to get back to you if you have a question. This page is really blown up and I'm so proud to actually be in front of you guys hosting this channel. So let's go ahead, let's get in there, let's see what we got. All right, so we're here, my name is Brian, if you didn't get that already, and today we're gonna show you how to blend and clear coat. Now in our last two videos we went a little bit more in depth, so what we're gonna be doing is I got all those questions of yours in my head and I'm gonna go over all those basic points that you asked, and we're gonna combine it into one video, we're gonna get a little bit of technical, we're gonna have some fun, and we're gonna paint this right here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna discuss what are we doing? So this is actually a brand new fender, and what we went ahead and I did is, um, cutting in the fender is a term of painting the inside and then putting it on the actual panel, and then spraying the whole thing all together. What I do, and I think it's better, is I just go ahead and I base it up. I put one coat of clear on it. So now it's got the same consistency as the rest of the panels. Then we put it back on, and now it's gonna be a much cleaner and easier blend because it's already got that clear coat scuffed up on it. So we also had right here uh, some little work that we did. Then we have our door to blend. Now. Why do we blend? Why are we blending? A lot of you guys don't understand the concept of blending. I'm gonna show that to you right now. Okay, so I think the number one issue that a lot of you guys aren't understanding is that you think that you go and you put the code in the computer and that the color is perfectly going to match. So when I put this code in NH797, it's gonna give me a whole bunch of chips. Now I never trust a chip, ever. What you do is that you take that chip you find the best one that you think is right, and then you do a spray out. A spray out is taking like a metal piece of uh, spray out that they give you, and you put the actual color on there, and then you compare it to the car. Now this code right here, okay, it gave me one, two, three, four, five. One of which is actually very good. So let's take a look and see why we need to blend. I have a tool right here that's gonna show us that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda cut this open a little bit. So this is the uh, color of the car. This is an amazing tool to have. You have your chip here, or your spray out, and then your vehicle. And what this does with this little division right here is it actually is going to show you, okay, how well that color matches. So obviously we have two very good color matches just right here because it's the same thing. So let's take, for instance, uh, R1. That means it's the redder version of the color. We'll pop this in here, okay? Now you can see that this color doesn't match too bad. It's actually somewhat blendable, okay? Well, let's get one that's not as good. Okay, so let's try this one. So now this really gives us a good idea of what we have going on. We have a very like redder, almost purple, and then we have more of a gray uh, color shade over here. So we know that this really isn't a blendable match. And then we have our last color. Now, take a look at this. It is not identical, okay? These two colors are not the same. You will never find an identical color. You can spend hours and days, and you'll get it very close, but you'll never get it perfect. So this is the reason why we blend. We're gonna blend this color, Okay, into this color, and you'll never even know that they are two different colors. Using the techniques we're about to show you right now. Okay, so the first step, and I gotta answer this question for you guys, because you, uh, I got a lot of questions about what is this stuff, what is clear base, what is blending additive? It's the same exact thing. That's right, it's the same exact thing. Some systems is called blending additive, some systems is called clear base. It's used to fill in micro, micro fine scratches before blending, and it's used to help keep that edge nice and wet so that you go to put your base coat down, 
as something to uh, sit in. So I have that right here, and then I have my Luma, Luma 3 uh, Aurora light. I like it because I've been able to see exactly where I'm putting it down. So the reason why I'm putting this down to begin with is you have to cover up those little micro fine scratches, and it's also to, it gives me the same sheen as that base coat, so I can kind of see how my color is blending. Let me put some of this on, and um, we'll go ahead and we'll start applying base. I'm applying this with a DV1, approximately about four, uh, 14 PSI, and I've got the wide open and the fan uh, just about wide open as well. Now we're about to spray some base. I'm gonna to talk to you about where do you start? Do you start over here? Some guys can get overwhelmed. And these are the tips I wanna give you as an overview in this particular video to help you paint like a pro, even at home. Okay, so where do we start? Well, we have, we're gonna hit up our primer areas first. Like I said, this is a new fender. We're not too concerned. It's already got the color on there. This is why this makes it 10 times easier because it's already painted off the car. So here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a very light coat, of um, base coat. I'm using a slow reducer. I'm not gonna need the blending additive right now. We're only gonna use it on a large panel and towards our second and third coat on this particular color. Remember, you don't need to use the blending additive or the clear base, it's the same thing on solid colors or every color, okay? You can really slow down that color with the reducer. You'll get a smooth edge as well but on a tough metallic, I would want you guys to try to use it. So here, 14 PSI. I just want to get the color on there. I'm not going for full coverage. I want you to watch me how I spray it. I want you to see what it looks like after it's sprayed. And then I want you to see what it, look, what it looks like once it flashes. Okay, let's hit up one more coat. Okay, so where am I at now? Well, that is about 80% covered. One coat and a half is gonna completely cover that. So now I'm going to finish everything off with a coat and a half of base coat. But before I do that, I switched my gun. I got my clear base. I'm gonna put it in the area in which I am going to finish my blend. And then over here, I'm gonna put it in the area of where my blend is gonna finish. Okay, let's use this diagram to show us what's gonna go on on our actual panel. So we want, ideally, our blend to end right here. So in this area, okay, we're gonna have our clear base or blending additive, same thing. Our first coat is going to come to around this area, okay? Our second coat is gonna come within this area, okay? I'm going to paint over the paper just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you where the area is dry and what causes a halo. First coat is done. Now we're gonna hit up that second coat. I'm gonna take the pressure and just, eh, I'm gonna keep it around 12 PSI. In a DV1, it's very low. On uh, a regular gun, it'd probably be around uh, 17. 
And now what I'm gonna do is step back about 12 inches. It's still wet in this area, slow reducer. I'm going to keep even coats, even coats, about 75% overlap. Okay, so we got that base all down. Now let's talk about what we have here. What's going on on a door right now? Well, now remember, we had number one, and then we had number two. At the edge of number two, we have dry overspray, okay? This all right here, okay? This area is wet, okay? That is wet. This area is very bumpy. How do we make this area smooth? That's why we use our clear base. That clear base was on, okay? It was still wet. The edge of this bumpy dryness fell right into this wetness, and that's why this is completely smooth. This is how you create a nice, even blend. This is how you avoid a halo because a halo is the crusty edge of a dry blend. Because that is improper reducer for your temperature and not utilizing a wet bed when using a metallic. You need to follow this in order to have nice smooth blends. This is a result right here. I've got two colors that look like they're one and they're not. That's why I like to make sure I cut in the whole fender, if I paint the whole fender, this area is very transparent paint. I don't need full coverage. I don't need that. It's already got it. Make your life easy. Over here. Look what I can do with the tack rag. Now we know your tack rag is gonna be held up by any sort of grittiness. It's like wax. This is our blend area. Look at that. That's exactly what you want, folks. Okay, so we're ready to clear coat. And guys, sometimes it can be overwhelming. Where do I start? Well, the power of the wet edge is really gonna help you. And what a wet edge is, is exactly the edge of your pattern. So as you're spraying, the wet edge is where the pattern ends, where it's glossy, okay? So if you were to go spray here and then a little over on that side, that edge is gonna dry up and when you go come back to try to do this area, it's gonna, that, that clear is not gonna melt back into the original finish. So we wanna make sure we keep our wet edge. You can start from here and move over or it doesn't really matter. You can start from over this side and then go all the way over. Now we're not gonna get too technical about how to clear in a gun setup. If you wanna know some tips, go ahead and check out the video. We just did one on how to spray. It's a little bit technical. So here we're just gonna get rolling with it. Spray some clear coat. So let's get rolling. Okay, so that first coat went down and went down pretty nice. Um, I'll let you take a look. I wanna show you the back. So yeah, your hood is gonna have some dirt, okay? Check out all that dirt. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is dirt all in here. Little, little, small, small little um, bumps, okay? I don't want you to get discouraged 
about having dirt in your paint on the first coat. Just get that paint on there. Now make it tacky, let it dry a little bit, uh, about maybe 10 minutes flash time, depending on your clear coat. Now that second coat, you're gonna lay down a little bit harder, a little bit wetter on that hood. And you'll start to see that that dirt will kind of smooth over because that second coat will kind of come to the top surface of those little nibs. And uh, you'll see that you'll have a much cleaner finish. Don't concern yourself with the first coat. That's my lesson to you. That's my tip to you by spraying your first coat of clear. Let's hit up that second one now. Okay, so we just laid down that second coat and I know guys that you can do the same exact thing and that's what I'm here for to help to teach you get finishes like this with minimal buffing. You do not need a paint booth, okay? This is not even a fancy paint booth. It's just a cross strap. That's all it is. You know, it's not even a down draft. You guys can do something like this at home, all right? You can use the tools that you learn from this channel to help you. Look how easy that blended out. Look at our color. It's all clear here, okay? So what we're gonna do now is get this unmasked. Let's pull it into the shop. Let's see what it looks like. And I wanna share a couple of words with you at the end of this video. Okay, so before I show you what it looks like pulled into the shop, uh, that's gonna wrap up this video. And uh, just a couple reminders, guys, that we have a lot of great content coming your way. Remember, this is just a side gig for me. I am an actual elementary teacher for little ones so uh, this is a nighttime thing so give me some time on those prep videos on that harbor freight gun wet sanding body work all that type of stuff i promise i'll get it to you i just don't make a video real quick i spend time i develop them and then i have to prepare myself for the comments because i get into the comment section and i do answer and i answer everyone as quick as i can so guys i do hope you enjoy this i want to encourage you guys to get out there to go paint something, remember, what's the worst case scenario? You mess up, you sand it down, you redo it. It's not a life, uh, not a life or death matter, it's just paint. So, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. We'll see you guys on the next one. Let's check it out.